he is what I call a difference maker. As soon as he comes on the floor, positive things begin to happen. The term what if is a popular one throughout sports, and there's been too many to count in the NBA. But the 86 NBA draft as a whole is one of the most interesting what ifs, as so many potentially great careers were ruined by addiction. Len Bias' unfortunate end has become synonymous with the 86 draft, but there's another player from that draft who was on his way to greatness, yet tends to be overlooked, and that's Roy Tarpley. He was a raw yet supremely talented power forward coming out of Michigan who could affect the game on both ends of the floor. He joined a Dallas Mavericks team who was on the rise and became one of the best reserves in the NBA, and it seemed only a matter of time until he was not only a starter, but a star. Yet in the blink of an eye, it all came crashing down, as after his first two years, every season after that would be cut short due to suspension, until he was banned in 1991, only to return a few years later and then be banned again. But that's the unfortunate reality of addiction, and even though Roy Tarpley could never leave his vices behind, when he was on an NBA court, he showed he was one of the brightest young stars in the league. So let's look back on the brief career of the late Roy Tarpley. A New York native, Roy Tarpley attended Cooley High School in Detroit, Michigan. He spent his childhood in New York, but after a big growth spurt in the ninth grade, which could lead to an athletic scholarship, his mother decided to put him in a better position to succeed, as she sent him to Detroit to live with his uncle. And luckily his uncle ran a local basketball camp, and was able to help Tarpley develop his skills so that before he even finished high school, he had a full ride to play for the Michigan Wolverines. And then after a great senior year, he would begin at Michigan going into the 83 NCAA season. But Tarpley was still extremely raw. There was no question the talent was there, but he needed time to learn, as although he would appear in 26 games this season, he only got about 9 minutes per game. Yet in his short stints, he showed great production, as his per 40 minute stats were all American type numbers. Overall, Michigan was an average team. They would start the season at 8-1, but would struggle after that. And in addition, a knee injury to one of their top players in Leslie Rockamore would limit him to 17 games so they would ultimately finish at 15 and 13 and miss the tournament, as Tarpley averaged about three and a half points, three rebounds, and half a block per game. By his sophomore season, Tarpley would become the focus. The Wolverines had a couple great upperclassmen in junior guard Eric Turner and senior big man Tim McCormick, and they had also welcomed a great freshman in Antoine Joubert. But Tarpley went from a bench role in 83 to an eventual starting spot in 84, and would respond by leading the team in scoring, rebounding, and blocks, while shooting nearly 53% from the field, as he would even finish second in the Big Ten in both rebounding and blocks. And with Tarpley in the starting lineup, the Wolverines were allowing nearly 8 less points per game than last year. Michigan would start the year on a 7 game win streak, and after 12 games they were 10-2, but they weren't able to keep the momentum, as they would finish the regular season at 17-9, and their 10-8 record in conference play would be just 4th in the Big Ten, as they finished the season unranked. Yet although they wouldn't get an NCAA tournament berth, they did receive an invitation to the NIT. They would run through Wichita State and Marquette before squeaking by Xavier to get a spot in the semifinals versus Virginia Tech, who they would defeat by three. But the finals versus Notre Dame would be much easier, as Michigan won by 20 to take home the NIT title, and Tarpley would finish his sophomore season averaging about 12.5 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game. The 85 Wolverines had shifted to a different gear, in part due to prized freshman guard Gary Grant having a great first year. But it was Tarpley who continued to set himself apart from the pack, as he was now a legitimate pro prospect as a junior. He would once again lead the team in scoring, rebounding, and blocks, while shooting above 52% and averaging a double-double for the season, as Tarpley would lead the conference in rebounding, while also finishing top 5 in scoring and blocks. Michigan began the year unranked, but would start by winning 8 straight. They would cool off briefly going 1-3 over their next 4, but sitting at 9-3 going into a January 12th game versus Purdue, the Wolverines went on one of the best stretches in school history. Michigan would run the table, winning the final 16 games of the regular season, which included a February 7th defeat of Purdue, which saw Tarpley record a career-high 31 points and a then-career-high 7 blocks. By season's end, the Wolverines were the number 3 team in the nation, with a 25-3 record and Tarpley would finally get his first tournament experience, as Michigan received a one seed, and a first round matchup with Farley Dickinson. This was a surprisingly close game, as Michigan barely shot over 40% as a team. However, Tarpley would still record a game high 15 points and 13 rebounds, but would shoot below 43%. But Michigan would take the game, extending their win streak to 17, but that same streak would come to an end in round two versus Villanova, as the Wildcats received 31 free throw attempts, while Michigan received just five 
in a four point loss, which saw Tarpley put up 14 and 13 on 50% shooting. And for his junior season, he averaged about 19 points, 10 and a half rebounds, and two blocks per game, as he was voted Big Ten Player of the Year. Going into his 1986 senior season, Tarpley was an NBA lock. It was just a matter of when he would be drafted, and he had one more year to up his stock. Tarpley wouldn't put up the same numbers as he did as a junior, but a deeper Michigan team meant he didn't need to take on so much offensive responsibility, as 86 would also mark the first season of Glenn Rice as a Wolverine. But even though his numbers were down, Tarpley would again lead the team in scoring, rebounding, and blocks, while shooting a career-high 54.1% as he would still finish second in the conference in rebounding and would tie for first in blocks, with a career-high 2.9 per game. And his defensive prowess was on full display during a December 7th win over Florida Southern, when Tarpley set a school record with 10 blocks. Michigan had picked up from where they left off last year, as they began the season 14-0, and would finish the regular season with an overall record of 25-4 and a 14-4 record in conference play securing their second straight Big Ten championship after Tarpley went for 21-11 with three blocks in the final game of the season, which was a blowout win over Indiana. They would enter the NCAA tournament as a two seed and win a close one versus Akron, but Tarpley would only play about 29 minutes due to him arriving late for a team meeting as the Wolverines would start both halves with Tarpley on the bench. However, he would still manage 13 points and nine rebounds. But on top of that, he would hyperextend his knee late in the game. But it didn't really matter as he was back in the starting lineup for their second round matchup versus Iowa State. And even though he put up a game high 25 points and 14 rebounds on 50% shooting, Michigan would still come up short, losing by three points and ending Tarpley's college career. But his senior season would end with him averaging about 16 points, nine rebounds, and three blocks per game. Tarpley's game was still raw going into the 86 draft, but he had made incredible strides since his arrival at Michigan four years earlier. And at this point, he was a difference maker on both ends of the court. He could run the floor in transition and hit the mid-range shot, but was also developing a post game. And he was effective on the defensive end with his shot blocking and all-around hustle, as at the very least, his rebounding tenacity would get him playing time in the NBA. The 86 draft had some surefire stars, like Brad Doherty and Len Bias. But the upside that Tarpley possessed made him one of the most desired players. Yet rumors of his off-the-court activities and commitment would already hurt his draft stock but not too much, as he was still selected inside the top 10. So the Mavs had selected Tarpley 7th overall, yet it was suggested that part of the reason he fell to number 7 were for instances like him being late for the team meeting or practices, reportedly once faking an injury. But he was also known as a bit of a partier, yet the talent was too good to pass up, and it helped that he was exactly what the Mavs needed. The Mavs were a middle-of-the-pack rebounding team in 86 and needed some extra hustle coming off the bench. Two years earlier, they had drafted power forward Sam Perkins, and last year had drafted another forward in Detlef Schrempf, so Tarpley would have to earn his playing time as a rookie, on a team led by Mark Aguirre and Rolando Blackman. Tarpley was still a regular part of the rotation, appearing in 75 games with one start, and even though he played less than 19 minutes per game, he was the team's third leading rebounder, as his per 36 minutes would see him average nearly 14 rebounds per game, and he would also be a top 5 rebounder and shot blocker among rookies. He would record 26 games in double figures and 12 double doubles, which included a 12 point and 20 rebound performance in just 29 minutes of action during a January 30th defeat of Milwaukee, as he would ultimately be named to the all-rookie team. And Dallas was putting together one of their greatest seasons in their young franchise's history, as after never winning more than 44 games in a season, they would set a then-franchise record with 55 wins, which earned them a first-round matchup with the Seattle Supersonics. However, this series would end in a four-game Mavs defeat, as Seattle featured a former Maverick in Dale Ellis, who was on a mission this series. Yet Tarpley finished the season on a strong note, as in his first career playoff game, he came off the bench to put up 25 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 blocks in a win, but afterwards would average about 9 points on 42% shooting over the final 3 games. However, he would still average over 10 rebounds in those 3 games including a 17 rebound performance in game four, but his regular season would see him average about seven and a half points, seven rebounds, and a block per game. But over the summer, Tarpley would seek help, as his partying didn't end when he left Michigan and was instead starting to get out of control. Tarpley would quietly check himself into a substance abuse treatment program in June of 1987, news that he wouldn't make public until October of 1987. But clearly he felt he had a developing problem and wanted to try and stop it before he became a statistic according to his own words. But by all accounts, it seemed that Tarpley approached this with maturity and was proactive, as Mavs co-founder Norm Sanju would say that Tarpley came to him in the summer 
admitting to excessive drinking and some cocaine use, yet expressing a desire to stop. So going into the 88th season, Tarpley was a little overweight, but he was reportedly sober and ready to improve in year two. Perkins remained the team's starting power forward, but Tarpley was now a sixth man, getting nearly 10 more minutes per game and acting as a secret weapon for Dallas. He would be the only non-starter to average double figures and would lead all players in rebounding while shooting 50% from the field. He would even finish as one of 11 players in the league to average double-digit rebounds and the only non-starter. As on top of his 57 games scoring at least 10 points, he would record 43 double-doubles, which included 6 games with at least 20 rebounds and 3 20 and 20 games, including a 29 point and 24 rebound performance in a March 22nd win over New York. So Tarpley was a hustle and rebounding machine for Dallas, as his career high 360 offensive rebounds would also be top 5 in the league. But it wasn't just hustle scoring that he brought, it was also great defense, as his 100.9 defensive rating would be the 4th lowest mark in the league. So a second year Tarpley looked like a future star. And when you're putting up starters numbers, yet coming off the bench, you're a pretty valuable commodity, which resulted in him being named 6th man of the year. Dallas had been having another successful season, yet they weren't quite able to match last year's win total. But a 53-29 record was pretty close, and they performed when it counted, as they were about to go on the best postseason run in franchise history up to that point. The first round brought Houston, and even though they featured the great Hakeem Olajuwon, Tarpley would show that he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best, as he would put up 24 points and 9 boards on nearly 59% shooting in a Game 1 win, then would follow that up with 23-13 and 13 on over 71% shooting in a Game 2 loss. He would then put up 17-13 and 13 in a Game 3 win, and end with 6 points and 8 rebounds in a Game 4 win. But Tarpley still had his hands full on the defensive end, as he would record at least 5 fouls in each game of the series. But Dallas had won and advanced to the second round versus Denver. Denver didn't have anywhere near the same interior defense as Houston, so Tarpley would eat in round two. He would finish second to Blackman in scoring, averaging over 20 per game, while also pulling down over 14 rebounds per game to lead all players, as he would have three games with at least 21 points, record at least 10 rebounds in every game, and shoot less than 50% from the field just once. And after Dallas fell behind two games to one, they would rally to win three straight, and punch their ticket to their first conference finals in franchise history. The Mavs would get a matchup with the Lakers, and Tarpley would again lead all players in rebounding while averaging about two blocks and a steal and a half per game. But his game-by-game -game series was a little more up and down. He would put up 18 points, a postseason career-high 20 rebounds, and six assists in a Game 1 loss, but would have just eight points to go along with 13 rebounds in a Game 2 loss. But with their backs against the wall in Game 3, he went for 21 points and 20 rebounds in a Mavs win, then followed that up with 16 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 blocks in another win, as Dallas tied it up. But over the next two games, LA contained Tarpley on the glass, as he averaged just 7 rebounds along with 15 points, as Dallas lost both to end their season. But year 2 for Tarpley ended with him averaging about 13.5 points, 12 rebounds, and a block per game. Yet unfortunately for Tarpley, it would soon be revealed that he hadn't escaped his addiction, as once thought. Tarpley was still a sixth man to start the 89 season, and he had started slow, but by the fourth game of the year, he would get his first start and put up a career-high 35 points to go along with 17 rebounds in a loss to Phoenix. But right after this, he would miss the next 14 games with torn cartilage in his left knee. He would come back in mid-December and was doing his usual work, as over the next nine games, he would average about 15 points and 10 rebounds per game, and the Mavs were 17 and 10. But then just two days later, he was suspended indefinitely for not complying with his substance abuse follow-up program. Yet Tarpley was again aware of his problem, as it would also be reported that the day prior to his suspension, he had informed his drug counselors that he needed additional help. So the Mavs were without Tarpley most of the season, but he would come back near the end of the year after completing treatment, as he returned on April 12th to a new-look Mavs team who no longer featured Mark Aguirre, and would start the final six games of the year, where he would average 22.7 points and 13.3 rebounds on over 53% shooting during that stretch. But the Mavs would finish at 38-44 and, and miss the playoffs. With Tarpley playing 19 total games and averaging 17.5 points, 11.5 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks per game, Tarpley was ready to go to begin the 1990 season, with the small difference being that he was now in the starting lineup, and he was responding, putting up great scoring and rebounding numbers, as well as recording over a steal and a block per game, and even boasting a 100.3 defensive rating, 
which would be the sixth lowest in the league, but he would only appear in 45 games this season. After playing the first six games of the year, he would be arrested for driving under the influence, which led to his second suspension in as many seasons. Luckily for Tarpley, he would be reinstated a little over two months later, and after briefly coming off the bench, he would be placed back into the starting lineup, and looked like he never missed a beat. Overall for the season, he would appear in 45 games and hit double figures in 40 of them, while recording 30 double-doubles, which included an April 1st win over Milwaukee, where he had 24 points and a career-high 25 rebounds, with 12 of those being offensive. The Mavs would go 29-16 and when Tarpley played, and overall would finish at 47-35 and to get a first-round matchup versus Portland. This was another opportunity for Tarpley to show just how good he could be as he averaged over 15 rebounds along with nearly 2.5 steals and 3.5 blocks per game. He would have 22 points, 14 rebounds, 3 steals, and 5 blocks in a Game 1 loss, then would have 22 points, 17 rebounds, and 3 blocks in a Game 2 loss. But with Dallas facing elimination, he would have his worst game, putting up just 6 points on 2 of 12 shooting, yet still pulling down 15 rebounds and recording 3 steals and 2 blocks, as Dallas would lose the game and the series. But the 1990 season ended with Tarpley averaging about 17 points, 13 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks per game. Tarpley began the 91 season on a tear, as after the first 4 games he was averaging 24 points, 12.3 rebounds, and 2.3 blocks on nearly 55% shooting. But then in a November 9th game versus Orlando, he came down awkwardly on his knee, resulting in an injury. Initially it was thought the injury would keep him out for a month. But a few days later, it was determined he had torn a ligament, and his season was over. As in the 5 games he appeared in, he averaged about 20.5 points, 11 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game. But after all his struggles with substance abuse, being completely unable to play basketball was probably the worst thing that could have happened to him. Things had been pretty quiet over the season regarding Tarpley, but then in late March, he found himself in the headlines for the wrong reasons, as he was arrested again for driving under the influence and street racing and his actions would have dire consequences. As at the time, the league's anti-drug program had a three-strike rule. Tarpley had gotten his first strike during the 89 season when he didn't comply with the aftercare program. Strike two came during the 1990 season, when he was arrested for DUI. But this most recent arrest would mark strike three. But Tarpley would really make his own bed in October of 1991, as he would refuse multiple drug tests after missing three practices in a row, which resulted in him becoming just the seventh player in NBA history to receive a lifetime ban for substance abuse, as it seemed that Tarpley's once promising NBA career had come to an abrupt end. Tarpley was still just 26 at the time of the suspension, so he still had a lot of basketball left in him. He would spend the 92 season first with the Wichita Falls Texans of the CBA, where he would average about 23 points, 15 rebounds, and 3 blocks in 3 games, before joining the Miami Tropics of the USBL and putting up about 32 points, 17 rebounds, and a block and a half per game in 16 games. But he decided to go international after that, signing on to play with the Aris Basketball Club in the Greek League for the 93 season, as he would lead them to the FIBA Supporta Cup, finishing as the league's leading scorer averaging 25.6 points per game, while also leading the Greek League in rebounding with 17.2 per game. He would spend the 94 season with Olympiakos, helping the team win the Greek League and capture the Greek Cup, as he would also lead the Euro League in rebounding, averaging about 12.8 rebounds in 19 games. So Tarpley had spent the last two years pretty much dominating everywhere he played. He was clearly still an NBA caliber player and was apparently sober, and luckily he would get one last chance, as in late September of 1994, it was announced that Roy Tarpley was returning to the NBA. Tarpley had been signed to a reported six-year deal worth about $26 million to return to a Mavs team who looked much different than they did when Tarpley was banned. But with a new core featuring Jim Jackson, Jamal Mashburn, and Jason Kidd, the future was bright. And bringing in a soon-to-be 30-year-old Roy Tarpley, who had shown how dominant he could be in the league, seemed like just the addition they needed to give them an inside presence. The Mavs had also rehired Tarpley's first coach in Dick Mata prior to the season. Mata would ease Tarpley in, as he would come off the bench this season, yet would still finish as the team's third leading rebounder and the only non-starter to score in double figures. And he was his usual productive self, as his per 36 numbers were all-star level. Tarpley would appear in 55 games, as he missed about 6 weeks mid-season due to a knee injury, yet he would reportedly also get into a heated argument with the Mavs player personnel director around the same time. But overall he would hit double figures in 34 of his 55 games, have 10 games with at least 20, as well as 21 double-doubles. And although this was the best version of the Mavs when they had their 3Js, 
they would still only manage a 36 and 46 record and miss the playoffs, as Tarpley averaged about 12 and a half points, eight rebounds, and a block per game. But even though Tarpley had gotten a second chance from the NBA, he wouldn't be able to hold on to it. Over the summer, Tarpley would develop what was believed to be a pancreas infection. The Mavs had reportedly wanted to release him, as he had a clause in his contract that allowed Dallas to release him if he develops an illness. But they would instead put him on IR in early November. But then about a month later, Tarpley was done for good, as he was given his second lifetime ban, after testing positive for alcohol three more times. He would say that he was sober, and that the alcohol came from a cold medication he had been taking, and would suggest that this was just a way for Dallas to void his contract. But he didn't have much leverage in the situation, as this would officially mark the end of his NBA career. The rest of Tarpley's life would be up and down. He would find himself in trouble with the law for a couple assaults, which involved his girlfriend in the late 90s, but also during this time had returned to playing overseas, for teams in Greece, Russia, and China, before returning to the US, and spending a few years in the mid-2000s playing in the D-League and USBL, as he would play his last basketball in 2006. He would return to sue the Mavs in 07, on the basis that he was discriminated against, with his status as a recovering alcohol and drug abuser, qualifying him as a disabled individual, with the lawsuit being settled out of court in 2009. Then there wouldn't be much more heard about Tarpley after that, until 2015, when it was announced that he had passed away at the age of 50, reportedly due to liver failure. Roy Tarpley was one of the many casualties of the 1986 draft, but his failed career is a tough pill to swallow. Len Bias acts as the biggest what-if, but you can never be sure because he never played an NBA game, yet Tarpley played plenty of them, and was one of the most productive players you'd ever see. It seemed like every year dating back to his time at Michigan, he would come back better, and it would be reflected in his play and his numbers. It was obvious he was on his way by the end of his second pro season, but instead, that ended up being his peak. He would play just 69 games over the next three years, then miss three more years after being banned. Then even after getting a rare second chance, he let it slip away, and was out of the league shortly after turning 31. Roy Tarpley is one of the more forgotten what-if stories in NBA history, but every what-if story is interesting for its own reason. Yet what makes Tarpley so unfortunate, is that it was only him standing in his own way. Yet when he was right, he looked like a star. But that's it for today's episode on Roy Tarpley. Hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. If you liked it, check out this one on one of his Michigan teammates or this one on one of his Dallas teammates. Thanks for watching and see you next time.